Um, and let's have a look on a quick outlook for today. So we are just going through intros and we will go to the topic. Uh, obviously, we will not only answer the question why and when uh, becoming a safe SPC, but also we would like to give you a little uh, more details and share our experiences around implementations of uh, safe and, and agile approaches at scale. Later on, we'll have a slot for the Q&A. Uh, we will create the takeaways together. So we, as, as of now, we do not have any takeaways. Hopefully, we will be able to create some. And towards the end, we also have a, a little bonus for you, uh, which might hopefully might be uh, interesting and useful for us, for you. So please stay with us till, till the end. We won't uh, take longer than uh, till 1 p.m. Okay, so uh, welcome, Nick. I see Nick is joining us, great. Um, let's jump right to the topic then. Uh, I'm sure many of you might have heard about uh, John Cotter and his work around um, change management. And out of his work, we could derive set of anti-patterns or or mistakes which very often bring uh, lead to at least challenged implementations or transformations if not completely failed so uh, let me briefly go through them um i'm sure some of them might be um known familiar to you first point is not as establishing a great enough sense of urgency so you Whenever we want to change something, even in our personal life, let's say you want to become more fit or maybe you want to build a house or have more money or change a car, there must be certain trigger. You must reach the point where you say, no, that's enough. I have to do something. Something needs to change. So this is definitely a fundamental element of all changes and implementations, we need to have understanding that we cannot stay in the current status quo. We need we need to move on. Once we have that, we, we need to realize that this effort cannot be done by one person. We need a group of people, group, group of leaders who will move things on. So we need the uh, powerful guiding coalition who will lead those uh, efforts and please keep that in mind because i'll come back to that point very soon third point is lack of vision we need to define something appealing we need to show how the future will be better how, why people should join us and what will we achieve what will be the nice reality which we will be living in once we achieve our goal next point is uh, not communicating that vision clearly, very often by factor of 10. So think think about yourself and may maybe some kind of vision which you've heard in the past. Would you be able to repeat it? Do you understand it? How effectively have you heard the visions to be shared? It happens very often that people share the vision and it comes in one year, goes out the other year, five minutes later, nobody is able to repeat it. We need to be able to communicate, to effectively communicate so it sticks in their head. Number six is lack of uh, planning and roadmap plus short-term wins. We need to create a momentum. We need to know what is the, our direction, where are the next steps going on? And we need to celebrate those first little wins. They keep the momentum. They help us to speed up. Uh, next point is declaring victory too soon. We will have the little wins, but they are not part of the culture yet. They are not part of the habits. They are conscious efforts. And we need to keep consciously aiming for realizing and achieving that vision because otherwise things will come back to the previous status quo be because all like the habits will win. We need to keep keep conscious efforts until 
those elements will become new culture, which number point is we need to anchor them in the corporate's culture. And now uh, coming back to the guiding coalition and vision. We, I'm sure I would even bet every one of you knows the quote from Deming, which says that everyone is doing their best. The problem are within the system and only management can change the system. This responsibility cannot be delegated. So it's clear that if we speak about change in the organization, we need support of the management and leadership. Management would have the authority. Ideally, if management is the leadership in one person, so they can also lead effectively, they can be present, they can be authentic, they can leave the values which we are speaking about. But the question would be also, who are the knowledge workers? Who has the knowledge? Does always this management or leadership have the skills and knowledge about how, what are those steps? What is our roadmap? I would answer that probably not always. And this is where guiding coalition or lays teams as Lean Agile Center of Excellence would come to place. And now we can ask a next question, who actually is part of that lace? Who, who are the members? What skills should they have to be able to effectively uh, lead? But I would let Nico share his thoughts about it. Exactly. At the moment, it sounds like, yeah, we need some people, we need management, uh, we need lace, whatever this lace is. <laughs> So uh, when you go to the next uh, slide, you will see uh, uh, the big picture. And on the bottom of the big picture, we have this green bar, uh, which is the foundation of SAFE. Uh, so we see uh, leadership on the left. Uh, we see continuous learning culture on the right, uh, on this on this, bottoms, uh, on this uh, bottom bar. And we see also uh, a red circle, which we added there, the SPCs. So SPCs are the SAFE practice consultants uh, from SAFE helping to achieve such a guiding coalition, to create such a guiding coalition, helping a LACE team to, 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 to be created, to having a goal, to having a, a proper stakeholder management. So when you see all the traps you heard, uh, you heard from, from Conrad, uh, when you see what is needed, somebody has responsibility that this machine, that this uh, continuous journey continues to, to involve and continues to go on. What I also did is I added a different picture on, on the right side, uh, on the bottom right side, where you see the SPC and his responsibility wheel. So if you click on the on the logo uh, with the red circle, uh, it has a huge text and also this image there, which is the responsibility of the, uh, of the SPC. And you see one thing that's important is that the lean agile thinking, the mindset comes into the organization. And this is something uh, changing in a floppy disk or uh, uh, or um, violence. You you need time, you need tools, you need skills so that the whole organization is living, is breathing lean agile. And this responsibility is with an SPC. So when we talk about the implementing safe training, it's exactly creating this kind of people. But it's not finished of the training, of course. It's a huge journey. So one of responsibilities, one of your responsibilities is embodying this lean agile mindset, and you will see also the others uh, slide by slide. But let's summarize them: leading the change, so being living uh, the things you are, you, are, you are talking, trying that, uh, giving your best that the change uh, can be can be uh, can can come. So you're leading the change. You care that safe is implemented. You care for flow. Uh, it's very very important. And at the end, having a look on business agility. How can we do business agility? And that's a lot of work to do there, a lot of uh, understanding. It's need to be created from the people who are engaged in business agility, but later more. So what the SPC is uh, doing is embodying the Lean Agile mindset. And how can this be done? Honorat, one idea. Yeah, so if we, if we look at the change or transformation, we can find an analogy to the plane. So it needs to take off at some point. It needs to click. It needs to start going on, start flying, if you like. And if we follow the, the analogy, we have two 
key elements. On one hand, we can lose the weight. The, the less weight we have, the shorter runaway we, uh, we need. So the, the quicker it, and it can take off, which is the transformation roadmap. So we have a clear set of steps. We have plan. We know what to do and we can start executing them. But another factor which help, helps us to take off is to gain speed. How do we gain speed? We involve and inspire people. We do not do those attempts by ourselves, but we need to know how to involve them and how to inspire them. If I take, for example, the uh, value stream and the art identification workshop, this is how we involve them. This is how we bring them along. We identify the value stream and art together. They understand it, they own it, they feel it, so they can later on uh, support us and work um, work along with that. And now you see, you have to be as an SPC some kind of a role model. This is the leading change uh, responsibility you have. And the next one is implementing SAFE. So uh, how you can lose this weight? How can you uh, put more speed on it? And for this, uh, we have also... Uh, uh, not we, SAFE also has an idea, a paradigm on how you can do it. Uh, Conrad? Yeah, so I'm sure you have seen the SAFE implementation roadmap. This is high-level plan, which is, by the way, based on Cotter's steps. So it exactly follows the idea of creating the moment when we decide go SAFE, where we have this tipping point. Then we define our guiding coalition, which is Lean Agile Center of Excellence. We define the vision, we define the next steps, and so on. I don't want to go to too many details now. This is foundation for defining your implementation roadmap for the context of each, each organization. To be able to effectively lead that implementation and go through the steps which implementation roadmap has, we have the implementing safe training, uh, which provides all the tools, knowledge, materials, uh, and basically all the tools to your work, uh, to your workshop or to your toolbox as SPC to be able to effectively lead that um, implementation. So, after completing implementing safe, apart from the certification and title and so on, you also get access through the huge base of the toolkits, uh, templates, guidelines, checklists, really a lot of materials which help you as the person involved in the, con uh, in the implementation of framework to work with it effectively. Another point is part of the implementing safe training is covering leading safe topics. So you also would gain the knowledge about how to coach, how to teach, how to pass the knowledge, how to inspire leaders in your organization so they can effectively support uh, the, the efforts and this what is going on. I just changed the color of one of the circles. The green one is there when you're time is there as, as an SPC. That's where we uh, educate uh, SPCs. It's quite in the beginning uh, of, of a journey of a company. Why that? Because uh, we as Keegan don't believe uh, that you can do a transformation by hiring dozens of external coaches and SPCs. It's really important that uh, in a company, uh, people gain this knowledge and also gain the knowledge to say when safe is not the best idea. So. This training, as, as, as Conrad mentioned, is about giving you all the toolkits SAFE has and also experience it. So we have a lot of simulations uh, on, on this roadmap uh, to simulate these workshops you have there, but also give you enough enough uh, uh, munition <laughs> to, uh, to uh, handle management, to explain them uh, what is the thinking exactly. So, for instance, you see the first red circle is a, is a leading safe class. And one part of implementing safe class, as the Conrad mentioned, is making you able, capable of uh, giving this class, uh, this leading safe class. And one class is make safe sense or not before you decide to go safe. And if you decide to go safe, the next leading safe is about, okay, we have decided to go. 
now we need a proper vocabulary a vocabulary uh, that the same the same words to do the next workshops and then the last circle in red is we need a leading safe for the first train or the next train we are starting so it looks like a sequence of steps it is more uh, circles in it but you will have to teach a lot of, uh, of a lot of leading safe uh, it's like a safe introduction to management that you can handle the transformation and of course as an spc you can teach every single course you see here on this on this on this roadmap except the spc implementing which makes sense you cannot educate yourself but everything else uh, is possible and also one thing uh, conrad uh, for conrad and me is one thing that's important for conrad and me is that you uh, find out which trainings make sense that you can give yourself just because you're allowed to give trainings doesn't mean you should give trainings but that's one thing you you will learn in, in, the, in the implementing safe classes when does it make sense to be a trainer? When not? When does safe make sense? When not? And uh, which steps are, are, are make sense? Definitely. And of course, we can come back to the question, why? What is the goal? So definitely the goal is not to become SPC. The goal is not to implement safe. The ultimate goal is, which we are aiming to achieve, is to achieve business agility because that's what the fundamental element of thriving in the current times and be staying on the market. It's not the, I think not anymore about or guarantee to, to lead the market. You need more to be the leader there, but to stay on the market, the business agility is fundamental. And now on this slide, you see why it's important to have uh, people trained in this whole mindset, because from the outside view, it looks like, oh, that's a mini waterfall. So I see on the left side, uh, business opportunity merges, and then I have some steps, one after the other, and then the business opportunity is leveraged. Oh yeah, it's just a waterfall uh, faster. And it's not, it just like look at that. So that's why it's important uh, having people trained, having people understanding the mindset and saying, okay, it is quite different. Because one thing is the first step is sense an opportunity, sense the market. And the second one is funding, funding an experiment, funding gaining knowledge, funding a mini product, a MVP, minimal viable product. It's completely different than today when we found projects, found five-year projects. So it's not uh, something like a waterfall step-by-step. Step. There are steps, but there are steps with exits, steps with going back, uh, steps with uh, persevere and saying, uh, sorry, uh, Says with uh, pivoting and going back and saying, wow, this idea was cool. But uh, if I zoom in in this part of the idea, we have a better product. So let's found this new MVP. So there are a lot of circles in it. And there's a lot of discussions because it's a new way of working. It's not just doing the same, just faster. It's, it's deciding faster. It's uh, taking experiments, making experiments. And that is what business agility is. It's really sense an opportunity and have all the skills needing to sense fast and then all the skills needing to deliver fast and delivering fast means also fail and uh, readjust and pivoting and so on and so on. So a really important thing and that's why we need great SPCs in the market and not just people um, reading some small articles and then saying, yeah, it's like waterfall, we're doing the same. Absolutely. Uh, let's link this, what we just said, back to, to Cotter's uh, steps. And I'm not going to repeat myself, but you, you see the slide. And I just wanted to share with you a few thoughts, few experiences, maybe hints, which you might be uh, dealing with or wondering while uh, working towards uh, business agility. So if we speak about sense of urgency and how to build it, how to communicate it effectively, it is a good practice to, to set it as part of the strategy of the organization. If we want to be really able to respond to the customer needs, to the changing environment on the, on the market, it needs to be visible in the strategy. And then it um organically trigger certain behavior certain 
uh, patterns in the organization. So we realize that we need agile practices. We need agile tools to be able to act in that way. Management support and determination is critical. There need to be clearly set direction. I have seen many only bottom-up attempts. They bring good results in a first couple of, let's call it iterations or, or moments. But at some point, if there is no lack of management support, teams and people start to bump the ceiling and they cannot go further. So this is a really critical aspect. Having a certain plan transformation backlog, uh, incremental changes, the transformation itself is also incremental process. Uh, the I, President Eisenhower said, plan is nothing, planning is everything. So we need to keep planning. It will change. It will, some things might fall out, some other elements will come in, but this all helps to discover knowledge. So it needs to be, be structured. Knowledge sharing, making sure that everyone speaks the same language is another very important thing. People need to know if we say role of scrum master or role of product manager, or we say inspect and adapt, they need to know what it is about. They need to know what's the objective, why we are doing that, and what's the benefit. Uh, top down, bottom up, I already mentioned. Uh, first wins, crossing certain chasm, it will, there will be always breaking moment. There will be moment with certain uh, resistancy of change, and then more and more people will see the benefits and will join along because they, they, they want to be part of it, depending on the personality sooner or later, but usually that, that's the pattern which is being followed. Recognize that culture of the organization would get impacted, would get changed, and we cannot ignore development of competencies. So apart from all the other benefits, having internal SPCs or having being SPC in the organization, there is also a good economical aspect that you can educate people, you can train them by yourself and you don't need to pay uh, for the external trainings and consultants. And finally, New practices becoming daily routines. That's when, when, when you really know that you have succeeded. When things start to go smooth and people react by by habits uh, to the new reality. I would like to add here something. Uh, as an SPC, uh, we told in the beginning, it's a journey you have there, and uh, so please reach always out to colleagues, to peers, uh, go to conference, read blog posts, uh, read webinars, because uh, it's not finished after the training. Uh, you will see this. It's, it's a four-day class. Uh, you're going there. You'll be an SPC. You'll be able to teach, but still, you will need to exercise your muscles. Uh, you need to challenge yourself, so there is a lot of uh, things out in the market uh, in, and in our case, uh, when we give a training, you will always have after training an extra hour where you have the chance to, to bring a real life example to challenge yourself and challenge us too. So uh, you will hear more if, if, you, if, you, if you are in our trainings. Uh, we looked at that, that you have uh, the, the right uh, tools and that if you standing in front of a wall and have no idea how to overcome this obstacle, you always can, uh, can, uh, can call us and we discuss it together. And you will see there's, an, there's an enough other offerings uh, in the market from other companies uh, uh, because it's really important. You're not finished after four days. Uh, it's just the beginning of a journey. Absolutely. But since you mentioned those aspects, Nico, I also wanted to add that you would be surprised how those four days binds people together. Amount of time spent together, amount yes. of discussions, challenges. Uh, there is many simulations, activities creates really the the group which goes along very well. So you you become sort of naturally part of the community. What we are also doing uh, as as another additional element during the trainings is we prepare the demo of the tooling which supports uh, PI planning and supports implementation of the method from 
tool set perspective in the organization, how to like how to organize program board, how to uh, conduct effectively breakout sessions, all of those aspects with the support of the tool. And there is also always a little social aspect or we we have the, like a social evening. We either go for for some beers or or dinner, things like that. Okay, but I think it's enough from our side. So I would be curious to hear if there are any questions, comments, either uh, verbally or if you prefer to type on chat, uh, please do so. We would be happy to take them. If it's okay, Conrad, I would like to pause the old, uh, the uh, the uh, recording uh, and then have chance also take your takeaways and then we open it again when we finish this discussion so you can uh, ask anything without being recorded. <laughs> so let's make a pause. Sure. Just a second. We we did note uh, the points which we have just discussed, uh, but I would be curious to hear or read if there are any other points which stayed in your your heads or ideas based on what we said. If if anyone has any any little takeaway, any any thought that you will take with you from uh, our discussion, would be great to hear or read from you. We'll add it below. Three takeaways is great. Yeah. Okay, I, so go ahead. Yeah, I think it's time to go to the last takeaway and then uh, open it again for the last Q and A's. Um, we have one last takeaway for you, a uh, really a takeaway, <laughs> Conrad. Yes. So um, we would like to invite uh, everyone to one of the implementing safe classes, uh, which we will have in an upcoming uh, weeks, months. One is coming up, both are guaranteed by the way, so they will take place for sure. Uh, one is in Zurich uh, from 18 till 21st of June. Uh, Nico as the SPCT and myself as the SPCT candidate will be both trainers four days. And for the participants of this training, we offer 100%, uh, sorry, 150 francs discount on top of the early bird price, which is still going on until Friday this week, if I remember correctly. So it's exactly yeah. opportunity to, for the lowest price ever for, for this training. Uh, if you make the decision uh, till Friday, in case the date doesn't fit or Zurich doesn't fit, you can also visit Warsaw in Poland. This is in May. 27th till 30th of May, so in roughly two weeks. Uh, also four days, also uh, guaranteed training. Early bird is unfortunately over, but still 100 per, uh, 150 euros this time is off from the price, which is online. Uh, implementing minus PL or implementing minus CH are the promo codes. You have the QR code visible to access the place where or page where you can book yourself. Uh, I will let Nico comment on Swiss part. What I can say for the Polish part that uh, I'm also flexible with payments. So if you need to pay half before, half after the training or discuss it, I'm more than happy to have that discussion. Um, I, I would assume that similar works for Switzerland. Uh, always. Uh, sometimes we we, pay, we let people pay off the training some, sometimes before. Uh, uh, usually people are, are fair. Uh, we just uh, help them uh, because it's really not, it's really a, a bigger sum and not something like thousand. It's uh, around uh, one, two and a half thousand. So if somebody wants to split, it's also okay. Uh, from Zurich, um, uh, it's our 
we, we have now always the same location. It's near the main station. So it's uh, really three minutes. Uh, yeah, <laughs> you see it from, from track 18. Uh, it's uh, our favorite location. We, uh, we are there. It's already guaranteed as usual. Um, yeah, and I'm looking forward uh, to to, uh, to see Conrad in Zurich. So, um, and yeah, I think it's one of the last opportunities and do something in English because usually we do all the trainings in German. And this is uh, just because I wanted to co-train with uh, Conrad. That's why we uh, we did it uh, in English this time and in June. Yeah, it's uh, so if you are only English speaker and you know English speaking persons, just refer them because it will be really the last training this year in English. All the others will be in German. So if you have friends, we can also give them the code. It's okay. Um, uh, would be nice because it's the last chance for for English trainings. Um, yeah. Mm -hmm. So, uh, last chance for questions or comments. If you would have any, feel free to jump in or type them. Otherwise, we are looking forward to seeing you on the training and seeing your um, sign up. There is just okay. one more question. Do you want to stop the webinar or um, uh, the recording or? Um, I will. I would like. Thank you.